me before we start this video, a large thank you to Kyrie, Conmio, Tony Sims, Graham, Jesper, Jimmy, Nikos, and Zanji for their support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video, and welcome back, Zanji. Hello, everybody, and today we're going to finish up the loading and saving system. So at the end of this, you'll actually be able to load into a game depending on the character slot you select. So let's go over now into the data and the prefabs folder, and I'm going to go to my save slot prefab and open it up. We're going to add a button component to this so we can actually uh, interact with it when we click on it or enter a confirmation on it. And then we're going to, I'm just going to drag the uh, the button component here right below the image. And I'm going to change the highlighted and the selected color to a red so it's very easy to see which button I have selected. Uh, and this will change the source color up there on the image to a tint of that color. So I'm then going to go to the script UI character save slot, and I'm going to make a public void. I'm going to call it load game from character slot. And this is going to be very straightforward. All we do is access our world save manager, and then we say the current character slot being used equals the character slot on this specific uh, button. And then we're going to say world save game manager dot instance dot load game. Now on the on click event, we're just going to drag in our button and just access that function which again is load game from character slot. And then let's save the prefab, and that's it for that for now. Now let's go to the player manager and open that up. So I'm gonna just minimize these functions here so it's a bit easier to see. And I'm gonna go down to the on network spawn function and right below the camera and input manager, I'm gonna say world save game manager dot instance dot player equals this. So if we are the host, we're going to the world save game manager and we're going to change the player variable to this player. Let's make it public so we can actually access it. And this is the simplest way to set up the player variable on the world save game manager. All right, that looks nice and neat. Let's save and go back into the project. And let's jump back into the player manager actually. And right here where we have load game data from character, we're actually never calling that. So let's call that. So back over in the world save game manager, after we call load game, you can see we're just starting the load world scene function, but we're not actually doing much else. So after we load the world scene, we need to also give the player object all the data from the save file. So let's call player.load game data from current character data and reference our current character data. And now if we save that and we actually load the game, this should load up all the data, but we don't have it set up right now to actually be able to load a slot, depending on which slot you've selected, which we're going to do momentarily. So under the create new game here, you can see that we're gonna make a save file, but we're never checking to see if we already have one under this slot. So we're just always overwriting something right now. So let's make a comment to check and see if we can create a new save file. So we're gonna check to see if one exists first, and then back over on the title screen manager, I'm going to rename create game here to uh, attempt to create a new game because that's what it's doing. Uh, and I'm going to take off the load world scene here and save that. And we're going to put that after uh, we attempt to create a new game if it's successful. So we're starting the code routine load world scene if we're able to create a new save file. And if not, we're just going to send a warning message. So let's just start with the checking for a file, which is pretty straightforward. We're just going to copy uh, everything with the save file name here. We just really need the save data uh, writer. So we're going to say save file data writer equals new save file data writer. And we can delete this here. And then we can also delete this. So what we need to do is check through the list of all of our save slots. And since mine is just static, I'm going to check one through 10. If you have a more dynamic setup, you may want to loop through them. Uh, for every file on that you have as a save file. So I'm going to say save file name. We'll start off with character slot one equals decide character file name being used character slot 01. This will get us the proper file name. And then we're just going to say uh, if save file name or sorry, save file data writer, that should be. We need to check if save file data writer dot uh, file exists. If it does not exist, then we're going to do some logic. So save file data writer, check to see if file exists. And then let's open up some curly brackets in here. And I'm going to make a comment here. Basically, we're saying if this profile slot is not taken, then we're going to use it. So that's why we're checking to see if it does not exist. And we're going to do this for every potential slot that we have. 
So let's just, I'm going to paste this below here. Actually, I can keep that right up there like so. So if this profile slot does not exist, we want to make a new one. And then inside to do that, all we need to do is say current character slot being used is equal to character slot 01, because as you can see, we just checked for 01. And if it's not being used, then okay, we'll use this one. And then we just allow things to progress as normal. So that would inquire us is basically saying current character data equals new current character data. And then we can say start coroutine load world scene. And then we're going to say return because if this is true, we don't need to check the other slots. And now we would just do this basically for all 10 slots. And I'm going to just do a couple right now to make sure it works. And then we'll do the rest uh, afterwards. I am going to do the rest entirely though. So let's just paste this again. And all you need to do is change the one to a two and that's it. So I'm going to go here and change the current character slot being used. O1 will be O2. And then we save that. Now, what happens if you don't have enough slots? Well, we would need to basically send the player a warning if there are no free slots. Uh, just let them know that they can't make a new profile until they delete one. So let's just notify the player. And we'll start off with just the notification. Let's go to the title screen manager. Let's make a public void display no free character slots pop up or message, whatever you want to say. Just make it clear that you know what this does. It's just going to send a, uh, a button pop up on the screen that the player has to hit OK and say, OK, I understand there's no slots left. And then we're going to come over here to the title screen manager again and make a public static title manager instance. And then do the same thing, set up our singleton on awake. This is just so we can reference this from anywhere in the title screen that we need to when we call a function because we're going to call the display no free character slots pop up uh, from the world save game manager. So if instance equals null, instance equals this, um, else destroy this game object. So there's only one of these in the scene at any given time. And with the way we have this set up, there should never be two anyway. They should never spawn an additional one, so we're fine. Okay, looks good. Let's go ahead and save that again. Always saving as much as I can. And then right below buttons, let's make another header. I'm going to call this pop-ups because we may have a few of these in the future. Well, we're going to have at least a couple. And I'm going to serialize a game object. I'm just going to call it no character slots pop-up. And as it suggests, it's just the game object of the pop-up itself. And then on display, no free character slots pop-up, I'm going to say no character slots pop-up dot set active true. Then let's make a variable for the button on the pop-up. So serializable field button, I'm going to call this no character slots OK button. Actually, I'm going to copy that too and paste that down here and just say dot select. And that looks good. Let's jump over to the world save game manager now and on title screen manager dot instance, we're going to call that display no free character slot pop ups. So this is, has to be last, it's going to first check for all your slots. And if it doesn't find any, it doesn't return, it's going to run that code. Now let's make an image, I'm going to untick raycast target because it's not needed. And I'm going to make it roughly the size I want the pop up to be. And we're going to put some text in the future, but for now, I just want to make sure it works. So set it to the center position on X. I'm going to make it a little bit darker, but not as quite as dark as the background so we can see it. And it also covers up anything. And then I'm going to rename this to no character slots pop up. I encourage you to name your elements in the inspector the same as their variable name. So it's easy to find them if things become unlinked somehow. It'll save you a lot of heartache in the future. I'm going to create a button. And I'm going to call this no character slots pop up button or no character slots button is fine actually. And I'm going to just go into the text field and say okay. And now I think about it, I'm just going to copy my press start button so it has the same style. And I'm just going to delete the on click events from the start button and uh, just change the text from press start to just okay. I'm just going to center that uh, whatever way I like it really. I'm not going to spend too much time on the look of it, unless you guys want me to do that in the future with UI, if you want to take a look at my UI Nephilim, but that does take some more time. But for now, let's just get the functionality down. I'll make it look presentable. So I'm going to change the text to OK. And then I'm going to add the on click event. And on the on click event, we're going to go here. And what we could do is just, you know, disable everything as before. But let's go to title screen canvas. And let's make a function for closing that menu as well. So right below, display no free character slots pop up, I'm going to make a public void for close no free character slots pop up. I'm going to open up some curly bracers. And I'm going to just basically 
disable the pop-up. And then I'm going to select the last button we had selected. So that's the new game button. And we don't have that as a variable yet, so let's add it. Under buttons, I'm going to make a serializable field button, new game button. And actually to keep the naming conventions the same, I'm gonna call this main menu new game button. So it's very, very, very clear where this is and what it is. I'm gonna put that below the main menu load game button. And then I'm just gonna say main menu new game button dot select. So if you can't make a character slot, you get this pop up, you hit the okay button and then it brings you back to the last button you selected which was the new game button. So I'm gonna call that now on the on click event. And that should work as intended. Let's make sure we hide the game object for the no character slots pop up. We don't want that to start. And let's drag in the variables for main menu, uh, new game button, no character slots pop up, and then the, uh, the no character slots OK button. So that should all be working as intended. We should probably give it a test in just a moment here. So let's do that. I'm going to start the game. And now I'm going to press start. I'm going to low game. Ah, I only have one slot so far, actually. So let's make a new game. And I have a null reference exception. Okay, what is this? So, ah, this makes sense. So basically, we need to initialize the uh, the character name on the character save file to something. It can't be just nothing. You can even make it blank, but I'll just make it character. But you just need to add those two quotation marks. So let's save that and go back to the game now. And yes, we can start a new game. Okay, cool. So I'm going to go and check out my world save game manager. This should be slot two. It's not. It's slot one. So we have a mistake. So this should be slot two. Let's see what's going on. Uh, I'm going to check to see if my file exists. Ah, I haven't set up the save data directory path, so that is a mistake on my part. Go back here to attempt to create a new game, um, and let's make sure we actually say save data file writer dot save directory path. If you remember, it has to be application dot persistent data. We can just copy that from the load game that we already have set up down here. And there we go. And that should be fine now, I think. I feel like I'm still missing something, so we'll check this again momentarily. I'm going to put this right below Save File Data Writer. Apologies if you're scratching. My, my puppy is scratching at my door a little bit right now. So I'm going to... Ah, I see what I did too. Um, we don't have to make Save File Name. We have to make Save File Data Writer dot Save File Name. So we're not editing the Save File Name variable on this script. We're editing it on the Save File Data Writer we're making. Very important. All right, now it should work. So if I go to uh, new game, this should be character slot two. And yes, it is excellent. So if we save this now, uh, it should make us an additional slot and that should be full. So let's go ahead and go to our save manager and save the game. And if I save it, it won't populate until we turn off the game. So let's save it. Uh, you won't see character slot two change. But if I stop the game and then start it up again, you should see character slot O2 uh, in the world save game manager populate with some data. And yes, it does. So that is working now. If I try to start the game as a new game, I should get this pop up. You see, you have two slots here now. So let's go back and hit new game. Yes, we do. Okay, cool. So that's working as intended too. Let's populate the pop up with some text to let us know that, hey, something's actually happening. Because right now it's just a blank pop up. That's not very clear as to what this is trying to inform us of. So I'm just going to write something along the lines of, I'm going to add a text mess, uh, text mesh pro component first, but something along the lines of, uh, you have no free character slots available. So let's do that. Okay, no save or no character slots are available. Um, so that's pretty clear enough, really. I can even say no empty character slots available. All right, looks good. And I'm going to turn off that pop up and let's just see if that looks nice. I'm going to test it out in game to see if it covers the, uh, the two buttons and such. New game. Okay, so I'm going to drag it down a little bit more because you can kind of see the load game button under that and I don't like that very much. So just go into the menu here, pause it, and drag it down, and then copy the component because it's not gonna save when we press play and turn it off. And then paste the value here. I think the number value was uh, minus 200, I think, something along the lines of that, just about. So let's try that again. Press start, new game. Yes, perfect. Okay, cool, very clear. Easy to understand, no empty character slots available. It looks good, and now it even feels like a game. Now we load our game. You can see here we had some uh, we had a variable save for our character position, but you, as you can see, it's not applying. This is a little silly. Uh, I remember this happened to me a long time ago. First, when I was doing that code, and I'm going to show you why. So you can see we have an X position and a Y position uh, and a Z position, but it's not applying any of them to our character. Go to Edit, go to Project Settings, and tick this box that says Auto Sync Transforms. That's literally it. Make sure you tick it when you're not uh, tick it when you're not in play mode, because watch if I unpress play, it's going to untick. 
So tick auto sync transforms. And basically that just fixes the problem. Uh, it's my understanding what is happening is uh, if you try to move the transform of the object with code, for some reason it won't sync the transform until you tick that box. Now I never had trouble with that until I did net code. So maybe there's an interaction happening there. To be honest with you, I'm not quite sure, but that does remedy the problem. As you can see, I'm at the proper position in the game now that my save data suggests. So if for any reason you guys couldn't move with your net code, or you could not uh, move your character via code by forcing a transform to position, just check that little box and you should be good to go. So that is working as intended, guys. We're going to do one more video on this where I basically show you how to delete slots and clear them. And we're going to make that little tool I was talking about that basically centers the selected slot to the uh, center of that little mask we made because right now if you make 10 character slots and you select them with a controller you can basically scroll the controller down until they go off screen and you can't see which slot is selected the idea is to focus and center the slot that's always selected so we're going to do that i'm really happy that we started off with netcode immediately in the series and things like the save and load game in the main menu because in my opinion it really does make it feel like a game and it's really easy to add onto this as we create new systems, we're basically going to forever expand upon our load and save by adding the data. Uh, we're going to learn how to save things like dictionaries and stuff in the future as well. I just want to say thank you to all of you who tune in every week and watch these videos. I'm having a lot of fun, and I'm very happy to have you here with me. It really does mean the most. And as always, a special thank you to my patrons. I appreciate each and every one of you so much. It is literally because of you I get to keep doing this, and I love doing this. So I'll see you in the next one, guys, where we're going to actually complete the system. And we're going to add some polish add the ability to delete slots and a few other just odds and ends, and then we'll get back to core gameplay features. Okay, I'll see you next week.